the meeting. We can open it anyways. <laughs> uh, the 28th of January, 7 p.m. start the, uh, we open the Community Preservation Act Committee uh, monthly meeting. Motion. Agenda. <laughs> Motion. Yep. Second. In Aye. favor. Aye. All right, the meeting is open. Um, first thing to review was kind of what we did last uh, at our last meeting was the, the progress of the projects that are underway. Um, I actually spoke with uh, Dave Taylor uh, the other day about a couple of his, his uh, projects and where they are and um, you know, the, the signals, then the park next to um, Dunkin' Donuts and the Remembrance Park that they're going to be doing a lot of work with um, and so forth. So um, he had some, some feedback. He said he might try to stop into this meeting if he gets a chance, but. Um, Can I just add to that? Yep, absolutely. So I, I talked to Dave uh, recently too uh, about the signals and the lights and we uh, are touching base every every couple, well, we try to touch base every week to, to kind of move that project along. I know that he has heard from Bell Traffic. He was waiting on another um, another bid as well. He's waiting for that, he should have that any time. Um, I did have a question about that though, because he asked me and I didn't know the answer. So <clears throat> am I to understand that there was no um, projects that were submitted for this year? Um, this year, there were no outside projects submitted uh, at all. We did carry over two from last year um, to table, we tabled them last year. Um, mm -hmm. One was the Spring Lake uh, Cemetery and Reed's Pond property. And the other one was the connector for the rail trail to the town forest. Okay, so that's what he asked me about, if we could move forward with that. Did he ask you about that as well? He did. Um, the one thing really looking into it and would almost need a very, a much more detailed plan of the actual connection because as we've seen with uh, the SNAFU and Norwell, um, using or calling a uh, sidewalk, you know, for lack of a better terms, yep. an actual trail um, will not fly okay. uh, for use in CPA funds. There would have to be a new constructed trail or a new connector to get from one to the other. Updating it with, like David had actually mentioned, um, reusing the granite that they've removed from some areas and so forth to uh, kind of line that new section or whatnot um, really still doesn't qualify because it's still an in-use public roadway and sidewalk. Um, so there's got to be another, you know, another action, another plan. Um, a direct route would would require a bunch of, of um, uh, usage doctrine drawn up because it would have to cross a lot of public land and so forth. The only real access is what Dave had suggested going straight down Plain Street. Okay. Um, it's just, it puts it in a real, real gray area because there isn't actually anything other than a sidewalk connector. And we know we can't use CPA for that. Okay. So. It's unfortunate because I do love the idea and I wish there was a way and there might be it, we just might have to do something in conjunction with like, uh, uh, you know, one of the private firms that owns down near Walsh engineering or whatnot that are, you know, right on that border between Abington and Rockland. Uh, the rail trail cuts through the back of that property, um, which is a commercial property and there is you know, some pretty good access. You could e exit their property, cross the street and virtually be right inside the um, further Western corner of the Rockland Town Forest. 
Okay. So there, there might be a there might be an alternative that's worth exploring. Okay. Um, and the other one was uh, Spring Lake, because as of last year, we didn't actually know anything that was going to happen, and we haven't we don't have a, a a formal number on it yet. There was uh, some negotiation that was going to take place, and some some legalese that needed to be handled. Uh, prior to us actually moving forward with that action that was uh, okay. the other table one. Joe can probably fill us in. He's, he's in on it, so. Yes. Uh, right now it's in the lawyer's hands for title search because it's very sketchy how it's set up. Um, the person that's in charge, her mother left it to her with several other people and it's at the bank uptown, but Doug doesn't feel comfortable until we do a title search. So that's where we're at. We had the place uh, tested on Monday, waiting on the results of that. I'm only having uh, a quick, simple test. Um, there's reasons for that. I don't want to discuss right now, uh, but it being tested for swimming, not swimming, for boating, sailing, kayaking, and fishing, not testing for, for swimming, because I don't think that pond will ever be open for swimming. I would have to imagine probably not. So we're just testing it for the what use that we're interested in using it for. And there so is I'm also... Waiting, I'm waiting on that test. I should have that in my hopefully tomorrow or by next week. Was that the Monday test? Yes. Okay. There's also another option there for, um, I guess, water recreation as far as like swimming or such is, is almost uh, a historical recreation too, Tom, that would be kind of up the alley there to get some research into it and pull up some of the old pictures of the old uh, wading pool that was there that was actually recycled water. It wasn't from the pond. It was it was uh, pumped up through their, their fountain and so forth. But that might be a pretty good location for uh, some sort of a, a historic recreation of that with a little modernization, you know, in the in the realm of a splash pad or, or something along those lines. Yeah, that's that's about the idea of bringing back what was there originally yeah. updated new uh, landscaping and there might be a possibility of another path connected with that uh, we're trying to get over this hurdle first and then approach the other one um, I, I think a splash pad kind of an update of that is, is would be really cool that's a good good way of doing it can yeah. I interrupt one more time Steve can you call Pete and help him get on because He's having some issues. He just texted me. <laughs> yeah, he's going out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Jim Paul about it. Maybe the Dyer Library in Abington has some information about it. I know we don't have much here, but even just like an old photograph would be great. Yeah, there's that would one, be fantastic. There's one in one of those uh, books that Donald Kahn uh, yeah. has. Me and Pete have been looking at it. And there used to be a fishing uh, wharf along the dam, kind of right near where the water goes out near China Plaza. It was kind of weird. And they had a giant pavilion uh, there too. So it was pretty interesting. Yeah, it definitely. They, they Building some kind of a, a, a step over, like a, almost like a gangway or something like that down that street side to give people an option to fish that aren't on the sidewalk would be pretty cool. Yes, yes, that, that's the whole idea, getting yeah. down to that parcel, um, down on the back there, put the boathouse uh, wharfs for the sailboats and the, uh, kayaking and the canoes. Uh, and then that whole right side is where people can fish and the other spot, people can just sit there and lay out or whatever and uh, have some fountains, 
make the place really look sharp for places for people to go have photographs taken and stuff like that. It's it, it can be a beautiful gem for the uh, town of Rockland for Absolutely. easy shot money, I think. Well, we're when asking. I, we look when, into I the shot, when I say shot money, shot money's a couple thousand dollars. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And we at the same moment uh, we should look into, you know, down the road the uh, the island. I know a while back a gentleman that lives over on uh, Thayer Terrace, um, off of Central Street. There actually bought the island at auction from the town uh, for a hundred bucks. And yeah, I know. <laughs> so that that was back in the early '80s. Um, he is still with us. Um, I, I, I personally know him, um, but that it's might be something worth, worth looking into getting, getting control of that. I could think of the, think of the uses with Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, um, you know, being able to do an overnight out on the Island or something like that, you know, would be pretty cool. <laughs> as far as that's concerned, any, uh, updates on any of the old projects, the, uh, either the King Philip, the tramp house. Uh, nothing new with the tramp house, right? Nothing new until at least the spring. Yeah. It's kind of what I figured. Um, so in, in regards to King Philip, I've been working with Doug to, because we had a change from a bid proposal to a request proposal or vice versa. We, we've changed it. So that document has been recreated and I have been in contact with the potential bidder and have walked him through how that process will need to work and we're there. So I don't know what, um, I, I, don't, I don't know anything other than that. I mean, this has been a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. And it's basically because of the trouble we're having communicating with potential bidders. Understandable, understandable. Yep. It's been tough, uh, tough all around with <laughs> yeah. the current situation. Even even just getting a face-to-face -face meeting with somebody is almost, <laughs> almost impossible. Yeah, and he actually, <coughs> excuse me, he, he did say that, um, and this is the first time he said he, he wants to come out and take a look at it um, before he was like, nah, I don't need to take a look at it. But now he's like, oh, maybe I need to take a look at it, you know, to make sure that we're in the same area. So I will reach out to him again to make sure that he's, we're all on track, but he's a tough guy to get a hold of. And like you say, with, with everything that's going on, nobody wants to in, come out and meet or any of that. So it's been tough. This is not how I expected it to go, for sure. I understand, I don't think anybody did. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's across the board with everything. <laughs> mm. it's, it's been one of those things. Um, I noticed Pete's on. Can you have him put his mask on? Yeah, please, Pete. With <laughs> social distancing here, would like you to throw that mask on, please. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> well, I do want to add. I think it's uh, even though with you know the, the hardships you guys have had getting that project going, I think it's uh, you know it's, it's respectable that you've you've kept the ball moving. Yeah, uh, for that project for sure. Absolutely, none none of this has been easy. You know, that's actually um, a pretty good little little segue thing for the uh, the town report. Um, we have due date of next Wednesday to hand in our submissions. I actually got the uh, financials sent over from the accountant's office um, with the. Uh, um, account balances and the trail balances for last year into this year. Um, that's just pretty simple. We just forward it over. I'm going to send those over to you, Tom. Um, take a look at them. You can make copies for yourself or whatnot. Um, that just gets sent right directly back to the, uh, to the clerk's office. And of course, because I'm an absolute complete moron, 
I had a Zoom meeting at work the other day, so I brought my laptop here with me instead of using the PC, which is kind of a pain. And uh, while I started that meeting, I was typing up the report um, for this year on the PC. And that's exactly where that report is sitting right now is on that PC. I'm checking through my phone to see if I actually was smart enough to email it to myself on the account so I can just log in from here. But unfortunately, that report's sitting on there. So what I will do is uh, I'll fire that off first thing in the morning to everybody. Um, definitely don't reply to it as a group. I'll put it out there as individuals. Um, have everybody just read over, uh, throw their input into it. Um, I ask if you, if you do change something, definitely, if you think something needs to be changed, change it, highlight it, um, and shoot it back. So I can just, you know, make the changes there, format it, and then send it over to the clerk, uh, very concisely. I mean, I remember 99% of what's on it. Um, we basically, I mentioned it was, a, it was a tough year, you know, first of all, with the, with the whole COVID situation having a, uh, an alternate date and whatnot that was set for town meeting, we still were able to pass everything unanimously. All nine of the projects that were slated for that year have passed and now we're just kind of in a holding cycle for some of them. Some of them are underway. Um, mentioning the, uh, the troubles that the, you know, the current environments uh, stepped up and slapped us with. Uh, as far as getting some of these projects a little further on. Um, and then another call to the, uh, the community, you know, basically to uh, check it out, get involved. You know, there's money to be spent here. There's, there's projects that people want to back, you know, getting the feedback from the community is, is number one. You know, that's why we, you know, all of us are here, you know, started this thing and kept this ball rolling for the past few years is, you know, just to, for the benefit of the community you know, and, and, and the citizens in a whole, you know, bring the projects this year. Unfortunately, we had no new projects. Um, it's probably a blessing where we did go so deep last year, you know, going crew closing in on that million dollar uh, mark that, you know, was quite a bit, but um, we did see a jump this year with our uh, disbursement from the state. You know, it was, it was, considerably higher than what our estimates were, which was pretty good. Um, and, you know, banking that money or using it towards uh, furthering the Spring Lake project um, would be fantastic, you know. So mentioning just a few of those things in there, um, not the specific projects that, you know, that we have, uh, have been thinking about or going forward with, um, but just as, as a whole, it was pretty much just a a knock of last year's um, town report that you guys all saw um, with some updates of, of what we've done and, and where we're going and what we hope to see. You know, um, I, like I said, I'll fire that, that thing off first thing in the morning. Probably you'll hear your uh, phones and such dinging around six o'clock. Uh, that thing will email over to you. Just uh, reply one <laughs> and uh, just put any of your notes right on there. Just just use your little highlighter setting on Word and highlight the spots that have, uh, anybody's got to alter and we'll put them all together and uh, go from there. Yeah, I think it's probably the easiest way to do it since it's I can't share the screen with you right now. I'm freaking out. Sorry. <laughs> I like the hat, Pete. <laughs> He's, He's on mute. <laughs> hey, we got him here. That's the important. Yeah, he's, right. here. he's here. <laughs> he is here. Um, so the next thing, uh, next item on the agenda um, would be open discussions of going forward. Now we've had some discussions about uh, uh, Spring Lake and so forth, but anybody else have any new business or anything that they'd like uh, addressed? Any new updates, whatnot, what it shall be. Uh, I'm going to let Steve talk about this one, but don't mention the house lot, yep. just premise. 
how we yeah, go. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. I can talk to it. So we had a really good uh, meeting with the, the Hearts of um, <clears throat> the Hearts of Use plan uh, last night. Um, Art from the uh, the company that they hired to uh, review the use plan. Really, a lot of talk about demographics and things that could be done uh, at Hearts of. Uh, really solid start, I think, um, for where we need to go. Uh, signage is a big one, uh, and maybe that's something we look at uh, as a potential uh, funding source down the road. I'm not sure because it's existing land that, that we would really want to put signage on and not the uh, CPA acquired land. Uh, but, you know, looking at one of the big things we talked about was flow, uh, traffic flow um, and, you know, flow of activities. Uh, and so there's some, I think, some opportunity uh, with some lots around um, the hearts of uh, in, in current parts of parcel that would allow for more visibility. That was another thing that we talked about is visibility of the park. Um, it's funny, Art mentioned that he drove by the site two times trying to get in there the first time there. And I was talking to a friend last night uh, who recently moved to Rockland, uh, originally from the North Shore and, you know, went there with his kids. And he's like, oh yeah, I drove by it twice before I could find the entrance. And so um, you know, more visibility uh, around the entrance, uh, better signage. Uh, and so there's some opportunities there. I, I you know, the direction that they're headed, uh, I think it's, it's really good. They want to get uh, public feedback. They're going to have some surveys um, out to the committee and, and Gene's going to get it out to the public as well uh, for just ideas on where we want to go. Uh, but there are certainly some opportunities around some properties um, abutting uh, hearts of that uh, would make for good projects, I think, going forward, uh, once it becomes a bit more clear um, you know, where the use plan would like to take it. How's that, Joe? I just want to, I'd like to add to it. Um, I, I suggested that we have the building close to the entrance. So that's why this parcel of land that we're thinking about would work to the town's advantage because if we can, if it ever goes up for sale and we get it, there's already building on it. So we're establishing a place for Gene's youth uh, center, the BA, the, uh, how do you say it, Steve, the focal point of. Uh, the entrance. Yeah, one of the things they talked about that, that lacking is uh, offices on site, meeting rooms, um, places for indoor activities um, to just further uh, the, you know, uh, what can happen at the park. More in line with like, uh, like what we had talked about in the past, like almost like a, a Camp Kiwani type of a setting where they do have a conference hall type of a uh, yeah, pavilion that you can rent out, you can use for your your meetings, exactly. your retreats, whatever it may be. You know, I think it's fantastic. I think that uh, you know, obviously, that's a direction that that some of us have been talking about for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, that getting the new parcel that we just got, and you know, going forward with obviously, like we've said a hundred times, they're not making any new land. So when it does come available, I think it, it jumps really high on the priorities list for uh, for what would would probably like to do with the as the you know speaking for myself as a member of the committee, um, I believe that that's probably pretty high, if not the highest thing on my my priority list would be acquiring land, keep uh, you know getting gaining open space access, and uh, and so forth. So sounds very good. It's good stuff. We, we we're kind of I'm tiptoeing with this. We'd like to be able to get a appraisal done, and then maybe be able to offer the property owner the offer to see if they would sell it to the town. And without giving you too much information. I know it sucks but that I can't give you all this information, but if we can get appraisal on it and go forward and, and making an offer on it, the person might sell it and it will help out the project. Unbelievable. Yeah. No, I think I, uh, 
I think I know what you're talking about. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm 100% behind it, obviously. And, you know, if that's if that's the way we could go, I'd definitely drag, uh, not that he doesn't have a lot to do already, but I'd drag Doug into it and, uh, you know, get his input. You know, he's got a pretty keen knowledge or, or strategy to deal with some of these situations. You know, you definitely, to get an appraisal, you pretty much going to have to get landowner permission to do that. You know, you're not, you can't just uh, send a, a crew out there to, to walk somebody else's property. So um, it might be something that Doug might be able to do. I mean, doing it from a map is one thing. Um, doing it from the book of assessors is another thing, you know, there's a couple right. ways to do it, but is that going to show the real situation of it? I mean, I can show you a couple spots around Rockland that what's on the map doesn't exactly add up to what's on the ground, you know, as far as value wise and, and what would be a buildable lot, and what wouldn't be, what consists of a vernal pool and what doesn't, you know, so I think it would, it wouldn't hurt to to drag Doug into it, you know, twist his ear a little bit. Um, it seems like he's uh, kind of on the same field, uh, the same wavelength that we're all on, you know, when it comes to these things, you know, tread lightly, be respectful, and, and at the same time, uh, complete the end goal, get that, get that, uh, that pie, that pie in the sky, you know, I, and I, I do think he'd help out. What if we, if I know Steve's really knowledgeable with uh, the computer, if you could send that lot number to Derek, maybe he'll understand it a little better. Yeah, just, should, you know, Steve, you got my text. Just shoot it to me as an image to my email on my text or something like that and check it out. But, yeah, I can uh, do that too. You know what they, I, you know, kind of red flag for me, but with CPA funds, could we, can we acquire a piece of property? with a structure on it yes yeah okay. yep. i know that it had been brought up to us um a couple times and then there was a monster fire that that kind of put that on the back burner was um the park street properties um, the two condemned buildings on park street down the end one of them burned to the ground the other one's just waiting to um, for, you know, the possibility of purchasing those buildings, um, for the land value for like affordable housing units, uh, the community housing initiative. Um, and that was an approved, uh, usage for the funds. Um, so as long as it was something that was furthering and advancing, um, recreation, the use of open space should fall well within the guidelines. Good. Yeah. During that meeting uh, yesterday that we had, he came up with a lot of stuff that was already in town, like the bike, a bike uh, trail that's up. You know, I told him we got a lot of this stuff all scattered around town, you know, some more ball fields and stuff like that. So we have to zero in on what use that we really want to use down there. And, he mentioned the seniors seniors want to bring in what's the game? Pickleball. Pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like dodgeball? I have no idea. It's, it's like, it's um, like tennis think about a ping pong ball. on a tennis court. Yeah. Oh. Tiny little pallet and a wiffle ball. Yeah. Oh, cool. I might be able to play that. I don't know. Well, they say it's very popular <laughs> with the seniors, Joe. It is very popular. It's a stationary game. It's not no, it a very is. It's, um, <laughs> I've talked to, I can't remember her name, but the, uh, the, the, C, the uh, woman that runs the senior center, uh, and she's very big. It's a, it's a friend of mine's uh, mother. And she is very active in pickleball, but plays in Abington because they have the, the facility. And it's something that a lot of the, uh, the folks that utilize the senior center have been asking for for a long time. Yeah, so... I've never even heard of it. <laughs> really, it's exploded over the last like two years. If they have uh, professional outside of pickleball. the senior community, but in the senior community, it's been big for a while. Yeah, they do have professional pickleball. Yeah. 
it's hard to think of that. I mean, another use too, Joe, and this is something that it was kind of said in jest, um, probably about a month ago, uh, myself and a couple of friends were at the old Round Hill Country Club uh, in Sandwich. It's now uh, Sandwich Hollows. So as we're walking over to the first tee, there is off to the left of it, what looks like a giant putting green. It is in fact a croquet course. And oh, before, oh. before we teed off, about 25 people wearing their best linen, white pants and white hats and white shirts and sweaters and started flooding out of cars and setting up wickets and everything else. And they, they were dead serious about this and it was hilarious, but they were good. And we watched them for a couple of minutes and there, it was a legit croquet match going on between outer Cape and upper Cape. And it was like, wow, would you look at this? Right. So a friend of mine that I was playing with actually says, Rockland needs a croquet course. <laughs> and it's basically, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a small, you know, it's like a, a 100 by, you know, 50 foot field that's just mowed really close, almost like a putting green. And these people were having a blast. You know, they stopped for tea. By the time we finished, they were all sitting around, you know, drinking out of thermos and whatnot but it looked like i mean especially for something that's a good senior activity or whatnot that isn't requiring people to run back and forth and all over the place you know so did, did you actually see a tea bag no so it probably wasn't tea joe uh -huh. I'm, I'm thinking they were adult beverages but <laughs> You know, it was it was it was pretty ingenious to see it, and it, the town now owns that. That's why they changed the name of it. Um, it's no longer Round Hill Country Club. It's owned by the town of Sandwich. So, that's a municipal croquet field. You know, that's that's something they maintain and they do. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like it. You know, something like that lawn bowling. You know, a few of the things that. You're, you're finding people starting to do now where you can't go to a bowling alley. You can't, you know, some of these socially distanced activities, you know, you see same thing, people, you know, playing bocce or doing things where they can be at a distance from people still be I like outside. the idea of a huge putting green. A huge putting green would be fantastic. Yeah. You can walk from the backyard and it'd be fantastic, <laughs> you know, but I definitely, I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for the land use down there and you know we'll just have to, have to see where it goes <laughs> anything else uh, to bring up as new business no Pete you're not on mute anymore I am not um, Joe, Joe you didn't mention that we had um did you tell Derek that you did have the water sample that reads fine? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's all I got. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Tested the water. Fantastic. No, when, no, when we get that information, like Steve said, Tuesday from Gene, we'll know a lot more on where we can go and what we can do. Yeah. As far as how. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that regardless of whether or not they say that this, you know, water is awesome or whatnot, I think we should still pursue that property. You know, like I said, same thing, you know, there's no, you know, land factory. So when we can get it, we get it. We can deal with, you know, down the road, if there's got to be some kind of a, a sanitation service or something come in to dredge the pond or whatever it may take, you know, the biggest thing would be that first step of, of protecting what's around it. Yeah. Pete, why don't you uh, mention about what you were talking about revenue last night on a, on the Zoom possibility of uh, oh yeah at Hearts of yeah no I, again we I brought up something about like a lot of these state parks you go to like to play disc golf hike or whatever 
it's and Derek, you know, um, you know, you pay five dollars a visit, or you can pay a yearly thing or whatever. I just don't know if something like that would be an issue in a in a small town. Is that what you were getting at, Joe? Yes. I, I wouldn't imagine. I mean, depending on what it is, you know, it, you know, every resident gets allotted one parking pass or something. If you need more, it's an extra five bucks a pass. Or so. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how it would be reacted to. Um, obviously, I mean, I have no problem. We get our, our passes every year for the spots that we go to. Um, it's well worth it. It's a great investment. I don't know what the, I mean, that would be, that would be a great, almost like a ballot question or something like that to, to throw out, whether it's a town meeting or something like that, almost like a survey question, you know, what would people, you know, what, what's your reaction to a small yearly monetary fee, for, you know, for you yeah, to do a non-binding question at town meeting. Yeah. I I wasn't going to bring it up tonight only because again, we're putting the cop before the horse until we, have paperwork back from Martha on the design and all that jazz. It really means nothing. Yeah, well, I think it, it, it I mean, does go hand in hand uh, because it's you know we talk about what we're gonna what we want to do what the town wants to do with the park and one of the big things that you know we look that really has to happen is upgrading the facilities right it's the the changing house it's the restroom and that's not going to be cheap to be done and without revenue streams coming in to fund those things. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, it could be put forward as a town meeting article uh, to, to redo those things, but to be able to, just like a lot of the CPA projects, if you're showing funds uh, from one area, be able to fund it, you know, maybe partially with town meeting funds, uh, I think it's, it'll go over well. And seeing the usage that the park, I mean, the park has exploded. I'm a, I'm a heavy user of the park. And over the last year, uh, the usage is, is absolutely skyrocketed between um, <clears throat> The lacrosse use uh, on the field, which I think is a great use of that field, uh, and in disc golf. I mean, on, on nice days on the weekends, I mean, you're, there's a backup on the first team. It's it's quite amazing. Um, and, you know, in the summertime, it gets a little bit tricky because you have a couple holes that go over the water um, or even in the camping space, the, uh, the, the, uh, the grills and whatnot. And so that you can kind of skip around. But really, spring and fall, is where that park shines uh, with usage. We really saw it with uh, the height of the pandemic and, and people looking for other activities. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I, I actually kind of like that idea, you know, if we're just kind of throwing ideas around of where, you know, each household in, in Rockland gets one free pass, um, but it's, it's seeing a lot of use from out of towners. Uh, and even if, it, even if it was a buck to park, you know, you think about that and, you know, how many cars are there a day, uh, you know, even, 20, 20 to 50, say it's 20 to 50 cars a day, 50 bucks a day, then you're just ranking, you know, 250 bucks a week throughout the course of a year. I mean, that's all going to add up on, um, that could be used for, you know, a number of things, whether it's just, you know, local maintenance equipment just for the park. We talk about a croquet field in the park, um, even in Jess, but that's going to require some equipment to be able to maintain those shortcut grass. And I don't, and Pete, you probably, you know the answer to this. I don't think the town owns anything like that um, to be able to maintain shortcut grass like that, uh, like a putting green. So it's, you know, nothing's going to happen there. You, we have the usage plan. That's great. But without the funds to be able to act on it, it's just a piece of paper. Maybe maybe we just uh, charge people from out of town and taxpayers are paying for it as it is. And that's yeah. that. I like that idea, Joe. I know that a lot of the area parks, um, especially like some of the places that we go, if you're a resident of the town, um, you do have access out of town is usually a lot of them have a kiosk box. Uh, you pay, you rip half the ticket off. It goes in the envelope with you, you have three bucks or your five bucks or your one dollar or whatever it goes in the drop box. The other half of the tickets got to hang from your window. You know, but that that's something that's also patrolled by a different service. That's that, you know, those those parking areas and and so forth actually have a patrol that goes out, checks to make sure people have actually paid, um, you know, the National Park Service and 
and the uh, National Forest Rangers, actually, are the ones that do that where, where we go. Um, but it's not to say that, you know, it couldn't be something that uh, gets put out there to, to use. I like the idea. You know, the taxpayers, obviously, with free access, I think is pretty key just for the simple fact that it is town property. Charging somebody to use property that's already owned might, might go off a little harsh. The facilities, on the other hand, I think are your key. You know, if we use, uh, if we go forward with the CPA funds to help fund some structures and some infrastructure in that park uh, that can then be turned over to generate revenue, uh, rentals, family outings, corporate retreats, like similarly what's done at Camp Kiwani, um, I think that can pull a positive revenue stream you know, without stepping on the toes of the daily use person that's going to go down there and throw a couple discs, you know, and, and absolutely, there's much more, you know, money to be made, you know, a, a spring wedding, you know, at a, at a, in a forest setting like that, you know, you, now you're getting into some, some cash that, that could be turned around pretty quickly to, to, to yeah. fund. The only reason why I was not going to bring it up tonight, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It's just, we don't know what's going to come back from Art's plan. Like as far as if, you know, they're going to go back to like the old school dog tags for swimming. So now we're charging somebody five bucks to park and we're charging them 25 bucks for the summer to swim. And we, I, I think we should just wait until we get those plans back and go from there. Yeah. Before Sounds good. We even, you know, that's all. No, it definitely sounds good. You know, we can speculate till the day is over, but until we yeah. get something that's on paper, you know, and and, and a, a, a good bit of information, I'm assuming he's going to come with that report too. Yeah, this is just ideas being thrown out there. Yep. It might not come to tuition. You know, it's just thoughts of trying to bring in some revenue uh, to maintain it. Per se, you know, so you know upkeep, get upkeep of bathrooms and upkeep of uh, building, you know, the green, like Steve said, and Pete, you know, taking care of that, buying equipment, like that. That is one of the things that, I mean, CPA, we can, we can, as a, as a committee, we can fund a lot of these projects to be constructed. We cannot fund maintenance. And upkeep that reverts to the town. The town's going to fund that. You know, that's another that's another avenue to go down with forethought. What these projects are are entailing, you know, is the fact that the town's going to end up in the long run footing uh, the maintenance of them. And, and well, they do it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're already, you know, obviously in a couple areas very shorthanded with a lot of uh, a lot of projects out there that are that are in the process or or whatnot and then just the ongoing maintenance nobody can speak of that better than Pete you know what it takes to to maintain what we already have as we create more um, properties that do maintenance and, and general upkeep you know we're adding to a strained organization already so it's, it's uh, just one thing to keep in mind as we, you know, as we go forward is, is the longevity of these, these projects. They don't, they don't end for the town. They end for CPA when it's done, but it doesn't end for the, the impact on the town, both positive and financially. So. Uh, Tom, how are you making out on the cemetery? Any update on that? Um, I sent an email asking about the steward and he pointed out, and I probably should have realized it already, that you can't use CPA funds to just hire a landscape crew to go in there. If the, if the, the CPA funds can be used to actually, you know, renovate, for lack of a better word, but if I just want to have somebody go in there and rake up and take down trees and stuff, they, they can't use those funds for it. So, I kind of a square one on that. Can we use it on the fence? Can it be used to replace the fence on? See, that's a good question because it has those granite posts that are already there. 
So maybe you could argue that you're just going to use the existing granite post and you're bringing back the way it should look. So that yeah. I think that might be possible. I'd love to have like a black wrought iron, you know, in between those posts and have an actual gate there. Yeah, that definitely would fall into a historic, you know, um, reconstruction or whatnot, or or remodeling with a historic, you know, uh, flair to it. That that should well with you know fall within the guidelines. Um, with that, would include a cleanup because. Right. No fence guys are going to go in there and build a fence around scrub brush. Yeah. So that is a way to get it cleaned up and, you know, go forth with a, a historic renovation of that fence line. Right. The actual interior of the uh, cemetery would be something else that would, yeah. you know, putting the fence forth as a, as a project and a new entryway wouldn't be an issue. Um, it would fall under the historic guidelines of of uh, CPA, uh, the maintenance and cleaning and stuff and the, the, the cutting inside would have to then fall back to the town, whether it's, you know, highways, parks or, or whatnot that would have to get involved. Peter, that was you trimming the trees out front, right? No, that was the highway went down and trimmed some of the trees out front, but we take care of inside as far as whacking it and mowing it only a couple times a year, but I will go in there and trim back and cut down a lot of those trees that are buried around a lot of those stones. I will take care of that. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, like when I was walking by and I saw that um, some of the trees along the front fence were trimmed back and I was like, wow, that's, you know, it's, it's only a start, but it looks so much better just having that opened up like that. It's kind of put some ideas in my head of how it could look. Yeah, yeah. It Absolutely. could and should look a lot nicer. I I was planning on before this whole COVID mess happened, like going to the registry of deeds and trying to get more information about the cemetery. Cause like I've gone in there a few times and you know, I've found some headstones that, you know, were tipped over and have dirt and grass over them, and, you know, been lost for God knows how long. And I was always wondering, you know, there must be more plots in there that you just don't, you can't see just by walking over it. So I'll, hopefully when this COVID mess is over, I'm going to be able to get an actual, you know, map of where the graves are. And um, someone suggested to me maybe even having someone with a drone go over, you know, 100 feet up and do kind of like a, a video um over the cemetery because it might be more apparent where the graves are you know looking from the sky downward than just walking across so yeah well, larry ryan's always looking for fun things to do with his new yeah family. he is yeah <laughs> sounds good could, to me could be worth the phone call after the snow melts <laughs> right well guys i think um if nobody has any more uh, new business or anything open for discussion, I think that that pretty much just about does it. I will uh, fire off that uh, email to each and every one of you tomorrow morning and look forward to some feedback. I'd like to, um, without putting too many time constraints on it, I'd like to get that right over to her at the latest on Monday, just so it gives them a couple days before the due date. If they have anything that they want either you know, stricken or tidied up, you know, um, going forward, if there's any other uh, documents that they're going to require for uh, for the report. But um, I'll fire that to you guys in the morning. But I think that pretty much wraps it up. If we want to uh, draw our close to the meeting and adjourn till, uh, till our next one, which we'll be doing uh, stuff for town meeting. Motion. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Yep. Aye. All right.